All right, welcome to the morning worship service at Temple Heights Baptist Church. Let's open our hymnals to number five. We're going to have to open those up now because it's not going to be up there on the screen. Number five, be exalted, oh God, if you need it. Here we go. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is great, is great to the heavens, and thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over all the earth. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over. Let's sing that through one more time. I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is great, is great to the heavens, and thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be over all the earth. Amen. Pastor? All right, on this Sunday, let's exalt the Lord. Aren't we glad to be here today? Yes. What a wonderful Sunday this is. A little rainy outside, and there was a bad accident on Bush Boulevard, and they shut down the whole intersection of 50th and Bush, so we know that's uh, something to pray about that only occurs when there's a fatality. Um, but uh, yeah, there was police blocked everything off, so some are still trying to get around that, I suppose, and uh, we need to pray for uh, those in the accident. Uh, Brother Louis Hernandez, who was Tetson Ministries, he's in the hospital uh, right now. Was, uh, they're checking out his heart, so we need to pray for him. Uh, and then there's uh, various needs uh, wrong our our congregation to remember up in prayer. But let's open in prayer as we exalt the Lord today. Dear Father, we just praise you for today. We praise you for all that you're doing, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the start of the new year, Lord. And uh, Lord, may we keep our eyes on you. Lord, we thank you for the rain that you've provided. Be with those who are still on their way. Lord, uh, bring them to us safely, Lord. And Lord, we just praise you for what you do, Lord. Lord, we ask for your immense blessings on our church and our congregation, Lord. Be with our singing, Lord, may exalt you, Lord. Lord, you are our only audience. Lord, that we sing to you, Lord. We give you praises. Lord, we just uh, give this to you. Lord, may you be within the next uh, few moments, Lord, that you'd speak through me. Lord, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, a crazy thought occurred to me while we're talking about, you know, be exalted, O oh God, above the heavens and things. But if God's omnipresent, that means he's everywhere at all times. There's really no up or down for God. For him, there isn't. Let us, you know, put him. But that's from our perspective. Let's lift him up and glorify him. Let's turn to number 527. Glory to his name. Here we go, 527. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing for sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory, 527 on the second. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. 
there to my heart where the blood would lie. Glory to on the third, O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to him on the last. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast your poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Look. All right, everybody, stand up and greet one another. Let's pick it up on that chorus. Here we go. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my cross was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right, let's be seated. And one of those things, that, again, I just can't help it, but you see it. it when we're singing the chorus, we're talking about above the heavens and everything here. And in the chorus, is. Glory to his, and then what's it go? Name. What are we doing? We're lifting up God's name. I don't know how these guys do it, but I'm always amazed at these hymns. All right, let's, um, let's turn to number 357, another amazing thing. Jesus loves even me. Here we go. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells us his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dear 357. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even on the second. Though I forget him and wander away, still he doth love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me on the last. Oh, if there's only one song I can sing, when in his beauty I see the great king, this must in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Hey, that's one song you could take to you every day, right? Just be singing that happily on your way to work or whatever. All right, we've got a scripture reading here. All right.
1 Peter 2, 4 through 5. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed in deeds of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Before we sing the song, I want us to turn there and kind of read the words. 247, Spirit of the Living God. We'll sing it through twice when we sing it, but um, it says, Spirit of the Living God. So what are we doing there? Lifting up God. Living God. And then what are we asking him to do? Fall fresh on me. We're at, he, he comes down to us. Fall. So let's read through that. I'll read it. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. That's a renewal every day. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. It says it twice, so that even emphasizes the importance of it. Melt me, mold me. That means he's applying the fire. Use me. That's our ultimate. We want to be used by God. And then it says, I will fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Let's sing that through twice. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit time. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit this time miss chris is going to play into the lord and as always we're just here we're just here
Amen, amen. Well, I think, Chris, she got a little happier now that she's playing. When I walked in, she was a little depressed. It's like, Chris, what's going on? It says, there's no Christmas decorations up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should come early because you'll come early. All the lights are off. The Christmas lights are all on. She's just sitting there taking it all in. And now they're gone. But they'll come back again, won't they, Chris? And then I think Ed will intersplice Christmas carols throughout the year because we love Christmas carols. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. The Christmas is a busy season, isn't it? And I don't know how to not have it busy, <laughs> particularly with, uh, you know, family and boys and everything going on. And in fact, we took a trip up to Lake City yesterday uh, to celebrate Christmas with Lori's family. Uh, they, uh, part, of their, part of the family had been traveling to their in-laws, so we waited till everybody was back. Uh, so we did Christmas there. And so we held it in, uh, uh, my brother-in-law is a pastor, and so we held it into, in the church fellowship hall. And then, so after everything was done, we took down their Christmas decorations <laughs> to help them out. So uh, I think we're getting through Christmas, and uh, we look forward to what the Lord has for this new year. But... Let me pause for a moment. <laughs> Dear Father, Lord, just uh, give me peace. Give me comfort, Lord, here and as uh, I open my mouth, Lord. And Lord, that's uh, always dangerous. But, Lord, let me give the reins over to you. Let you be speaking, Lord. I know it's been a busy week. And, and uh, Lord, I haven't been able to uh, totally focus. But, Lord, uh, may you take control, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, just guide and direct all you do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been uh, going through First Peter while we've been uh, intertwined between holiday uh, messages and uh, celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving. So we're in First Peter, and uh, I am uh, um, uh, so overjoyed. Brother Jay is with us today, and uh, I don't know, Brother Jay, you remember it must have been a couple years ago now, but we had a discussion about First Peter on who it's uh, who. You know, you want to look at who is the book addressed to. Right? Who was who it addressed to? And clearly it's addressed to Christians, but it's addressed to a specific group of Christians. And I was so thankful Brother Jay brought this to my attention uh, several years ago. But uh, Peter's writing to Jewish believers in Asia Minor. And, and you know, there's, and he's, he's comforted them, giving them strength as they've been scattered from Jerusalem already at this time. And here he's giving them that comfort on that uh, sure foundation, as we'll talk about today, that the sincere milk of the word and giving them that wonderful foundation. And while it's addressed to Jewish Christians, it's addressed to Christians, right? So there's specific words and things that he's writing to the Jewish Christians that particularly bring to light Jewishness, right? Uh, and so giving them comfort and letting them have that connection with uh, the Old Testament prophecies and showing them this is the Messiah. You are on a sure foundation. And so, uh, Brother Jay, what a blessing you are here to be with me today and clearly give me more, more insight uh, as uh, we go along as uh, we love our discussions. But as we continue along in First Peter, we, uh, af after Thanksgiving, we covered in First Peter chapter 2, verses, uh, the first three verses, uh, where we talked about the desire uh, for the sincere milk of the word. And then we got to taste the Lord. It was good, and that fell right in line with Thanksgiving, because that was right after Thanksgiving, and so we made it into a Thanksgiving message. And so uh, today I want to talk about Legos. How many of you, all kids particularly, uh, maybe adults for that matter, got Legos for Christmas? Anybody here? I think my two older have transitioned. We call it a transition year, transitioning. They're getting clothes instead of toys. But the two younger one, they've got a plethora of Legos. And so what happens with Legos? There are all these blocks, all these different size blocks and colors and all these different things. And what do you do? You open up uh, the instructions and then you start pulling those blocks together. And all of a sudden it makes this object, right? And some of these are really fascinating. And in fact, my uh, Andrew, he enjoys watching Lego videos where people are putting together Legos and he watches them and then kind of duplicates or got all of his Legos all out and, and so forth. But, and then others, I know, and I know as a kid, we would get Legos and then uh, put together the set. And really after the set is built, I would take it all apart and build something of my own creation. And I got to confess, while in church as a teen, a young boy, 
boy, I'll just say boy, it could have been of many years, wet length, that I would think about going home and what am I going to do with those Legos. I'm sorry, the sermon was going on, but that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> I confess. Uh, don't you do that today. <laughs> But those Legos, those pieces, how to fit those pieces all together, right? And come up with that. How they, they all have to finally fit together or else the, the whole will fall apart. They won't stand, stand up uh, for anything. But uh, here we start off in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built up to a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which is be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. I have three points. Uh, Lori reprimanded me last week for ten points. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll just make three points and then do sub points under those points. <laughs> but anyway, first of all, we find out that Jesus is the chief cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. And going back to the first four, or the beginning of verse four, it says, to whom coming? Starts off with the whom coming. Who are you coming to? Well, verse 3 shows us that the Lord is gracious. We are coming to the Lord. We are coming to the Lord. Well, how should we come to the Lord? Well, he's a living stone, as a living stone. Well, what does that mean? Why is Jesus called a living stone? Well, first of all, let's talk about living. Jesus is not dead. Can we say praise the Lord for that? Amen. Praise the Lord. He is not dead. He is living. He's a living stone. He's alive. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, we find that Jesus was rejected of men, and he was put on the cross, and what? He was raised from the dead. It was all part of his perfect plan, as we'll see in a bit. But he is alive. He is alive, and more than that, he is active and working in each one of our lives. He is a living stone. You know, and a stone is just something that sits there, right? And we'll talk about the value of the stone, but it just sits there. But this is something more than something just sit there. It's a living stone, a living stone, active in our lives, and that is Jesus. That is Jesus. And as a stone, a stone doesn't change, does it? It just, it's there, right? It's a solid, solid block, whether you're thinking of a mountain or you're thinking of a cinder block or whatever you may want to consider uh, the stone, it is, it is unchanging. And we find here that as a living stone, he is the foundation of our church. He is the foundation of the church, the big church seat, right, the universal church, and us as a, as a body of believers. He is our sure foundation, cornerstone. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, Never let the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The foundation of God standeth sure. Praise the Lord. We, have, we live in a world where things are constantly changing. If you're not up with the culture, you, you will fall behind. That is not true. Stay steadfast to the sure foundation. I've been ridiculed by my boys that I am not keeping with the fad, the fashion trends. I am not wearing the clothes that I should be wearing as what's happening today. Well, I don't, you know, that's fashion all. You know, I mean, I, I, my hair hasn't changed since I came out of the womb. <laughs> but, but we have a sure foundation. God doesn't change. We always know what it is. Our ancestors knew the same thing we knew about God. He doesn't change. It doesn't change, and praise the Lord, we can rely on them. He is the foundation we can stand upon. Not only is Jesus a living stone, he is the cornerstone. He is cornerstone. What is a cornerstone? What is a cornerstone? Well, with Legos, right, you come up with something in your mind, or maybe you're looking at plans, that first brick you put on the plate, that sets, you got to start off with something. Where does that start? Where does that start? And so he's the chief cornerstone. He is the cornerstone, which is critical building block to any building. The critical building block to any building. First of all, it is the, the first stone that's set in place. 
the first stone that's set in place. When we have, and I had some graphics there, but something happened, but anyway, just imagine the first stone you set in place, from there, everything else builds off of it. Careful measurements and planning are performed to set the stone in the exact position. Uh, Brother Jay and I are working the transportation field, and if you have a roadway alignment, you move over a foot over that, well, that affects everything else along that alignment. And so there's detailed planning to figure out where you should start, how it should work, where, and then what it affects all the others, because you would need everything else to work as well. And so there's immense planning that goes on and measurements to make sure everything is perfect and it's set. And then when you set that stone, it's where it should be, and it doesn't change. It's set there, and then it orientates the entire building. So consider you put a, a cornerstone in a corner there. If it's off that way, the whole building's going off this way. If it's off that way, it's going that way, right? It sets the alignment, the orientation of your building, orientation of your project. And so Jesus is the cornerstone. Job chapter 38, verse 4. Job's love Job, right? And that's by the end of Job, we find that God is now asking Job questions that Job can't answer. And so these are one of the questions here in Job 38 and verse 4. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stressed the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Notice all that God is saying here. He is talking to Job and telling you all the details, all the planning, all the measurements that took place, everything, all the increases you see take place. Were you there when all that took place? Were you there? And uh, in our engineering field, you would be kind of surprised how our projects all come about. It's like making sausage. <laughs> There's a little bit of uh, math, a little bit of planning, and a little bit of politics, and somehow there's some votes that go along with it, but there is uh, a lot of planning, years of planning to take place, and the years of changes till it finally, finally gets set. And here we have the God who planned everything since the foundation, before the foundation of the world was set. The intricacies, the measures, stretching the line thereof, uh, the foundations, he set it all. He said, oh, we have a God, we have a sovereign God that knows every detail about you and has you perfectly where you need to be at any point in time because he had it planned for the future, uh, for the past. And we find out it's all related to the cornerstone, and that cornerstone is Jesus. Jesus was set first before everything else set around him. So the cornerstone is the first stone set in place. And so salvation was planned since the world was created. 1 Peter 1, 19, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Praise the Lord, our wonderful God, our sovereign God, had a plan from the very beginning. You're not that wandering in, in space. You're not out there in some sort of chaos. You're not some random thing that occurred. It's been all planned. And we have a God that is perfectly planned. Second thing we see about a, the cornerstone is usually the largest stone in the building. Sometimes it's usually a, a different type of stone, something that stands out, uh, something that's uh, kind of monumental. Uh, kind of usually the largest, most solid, most carefully constructed of any of the stones there. This is a special stone. It's the first one put in place. And you can go look at various buildings, and they'll make it an ornate stone, and they'll have... Uh, you know, inscription on it, the year it was set, and who was there. And, you know, sometimes you look at these, these stones or these plaques, and there's listing the building committee, and he's listing all, everyone's on there, the building committee, and, you know, all kinds of things like that are, are listed on the stone, and it's a special stone, and they're putting there to start the project that sets the project in place. In verse 6 of 1 Peter chapter 2, <clears throat> it says, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, well, what does that mean? Peter's quoting scripture, right? Peter's quoting scripture, and he lays it out there. You don't have to figure out, is this uh, something he's coming up with his own? Is this an original thought? No, it's not an original thought. He's coming up, 
He's quoting scripture. It says here, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. What is he quoting? Who is he quoting? He's quoting Isaiah. Isaiah 28, 16. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. So what is Peter saying? What is Isaiah saying? It's precious. Jesus is precious, isn't he? Yes, he is precious. He's been tried. Hasn't he been tried? <laughs> he was born as a baby. He lived for 33 years. He was in front of everybody. He was on display. He was attacked from all sides physically and uh, verbally. He was tried, right? And so a Passover lamb, when a Passover lamb was selected on Palm Sunday, we call it Palm Sunday, but it's a lamb selection day, uh, they would, the Jews would come into the temple area and get their Passover lamb, and what? They would keep it for the next five days where they would observe the lamb to make sure it was tried, make sure this is the lamb that was going to take the blood of my, or take the sins away from me, uh, and then they would sacrifice it on Passover day. Jesus came and lived and was tried in front of us. He was observed in front of us. And we find that he is precious. He met all the requirements to be that chief cornerstone. He is precious. He is precious. The cornerstone is usually inscribed, as we talked about, with the date it was laid, the owner, and pertinent information. So the cornerstone describes ownership, ownership of the building, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of another apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Cornerstone, you look at the inscriptions, it kind of sets who's the owner of this building. Why was this building set? Who's the owner of it? A cornerstone denotes a new era, a new building, a new change. Something new is happening here, right? It wasn't there before, and so a cornerstone is set. And so there's usually a big ceremony uh, where they're setting the cornerstone, and dignitaries are there, and, you know, there's the, um, to set the stone. And so it's setting a new, something new is happening. Something new is happening. You know, there was a point in time where the cornerstone was laid. In verse 7, Peter quotes again, Psalms 118. There's a lot of quoting going on here with Peter, isn't he? He's quoting Psalm 118. And I'm going to go a little bit more into Psalm 118 than the quote to set up the uh, context. But Psalm 118, 21 says, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It's marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. There was a day that changed history. Jesus' death on the cross, his resurrection, had victory over sin, had victory over death. It changed history. We no longer are underneath uh, the law, underneath sin, but he has freed us from that. He has freed us. It's a day that changed history. The cornerstone has been tried, it's, been, it's precious, it's been set, and it changed history. Not only does Peter quote Psalm 118, 22, but Matthew quotes it in 21, 42, and Mark quotes it in 12, verse 10, and Luke quotes it in 20, verse 17, and Paul quotes it in Acts, or uh, Luke quotes it in Acts 4, 11. Psalm 118, 22 is used quite through scripture and is quoted quite often. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. We're all aware of what happened. We're all aware Jesus sent to the cross. We're all aware that Jesus rose again. And this is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My mom would uh, quote this verse just about every day at home, uh, welcoming the new day, and clearly that's what it's for, but really... This verse is talking about a particular day. A particular day. This is the day which the Lord hath made. He made the day that Jesus went to die for our sins. A whole, all of history led up to that point, and all of us are looking back to that point. This is the day the Lord hath made. Hath made. He planned it. He said it. It was already, already a part of his work. 
this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We got a lot of rejoicing to do, don't we? We have a lot of rejoicing to do. He had victory over sin and over death. A new age has begun, and that age is built on him. So the church age starts, right? The church. You know, with the cornerstone, all other stones are placed in alignment with the cornerstone. The cornerstone is laid with the purpose of a building to be built. Every measurement of the building is based in relation to that stone. Where is that door going to be? Well, where is the cornerstone? Let me measure it from there. That's where the door will be. Everything is related to that. If that stone was moved that way, the door will be moved also. Everything is in relation to that first stone you put in, that first Lego you put on your block, on your plate. Everything is related to that. What does that mean? The stone sets the standard for everything that is built. The stone sets the standard. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 says, he saith unto them, but who say ye that I am? Jesus is talking to his disciples. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed unto thee, but my father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee also, thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Of course, that last verse, verse 18, is taken out of context by some because they're not understanding upon this rock. Which is this rock? Some refer to Peter, but it's not referring to Peter, is it? It's referring to Christ. Amen. Referring to Christ. That's why I read a little bit further. That thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This rock I will build my church on. That cornerstone, we as a church are built from that cornerstone. We're put into that cornerstone. We, everything is referenced to that cornerstone. All other stones are placed in alignment with the cornerstone. You know, once uh, the building started and that first stone is put, the masons get in there and start putting up all the bricks real fast, right? They're, they're like clockwork, just put it in there. But they got to make sure that first one is set correct. Otherwise, they got to start over. So Jesus is the, first, is the chief cornerstone. Secondly, we are also living, lively stones. Verse 5 of chapter 2, First Peter. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We are lively stones. We are invited to join Jesus. Isn't that incredible? The God of the universe, he doesn't need us, but he invites us to be a part of his work. He invites us to have his passion. He invites us to be work alongside of him. So we are also lively stones. We're not dead. Remember when we are born again, right? Our sin nature, our, our uh, spiritual nature becomes alive because we accepted him. We have a relationship with our heavenly Father. Our spirit becomes alive again, uh, alive. We are also lively stones. And what's the purpose? To build up a spiritual house, to build a church, to build up a congregation of believers, or build up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. These stones, these are stones, these lively stones are people who have chosen Jesus and have placed their lives upon his foundation. These are stones that have chosen Jesus and placed their lives upon his foundation. 1 Corinthians 12, 14, For the body is not one member, but many. At the foot shall say, But I am not the hand, I am not the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? And of now... But God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. We, are, we have chosen, we have accepted Christ as our Savior. We have chosen to be a part of God's work. He has set us in place. And in this building, he's setting those bricks in the place where he wants them to be. And so these stones build the church. 
these stones build a church. All right, look around. Do you see anybody like yourself? All right, Anna, why'd you laugh? Who did you look at and you laughed at? <laughs> Everyone here is different, aren't they? Isn't that amazing? God has built a church with all different blocks. And I, you go, go to, uh, you know, today we have cinder blocks or all standardized blocks, but back in the day they would have uh, literally pick up stones, right, big stones, and they would put them together, and none of those stones were the same. And yet the chief master builder would pick out that stone and put it into the fence or into the wall, whatever the case may be, and you look at these buildings and every stone is a different shape, but yet they all fit together amazingly. And you and I would go that. We're not chief, chief architect, a builder. We'd go up to these stones and say, there's no way I'm going to build a, build a house, build a church, build a wall. None of these fit together. I don't know. But yet the Lord does that. How many of you like puzzles? Jigsaw, uh, puzzles. Uh, you know, how many of you can pick out those pieces and know exactly where they can go? Oh, you can? Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop that. But these, how do these pieces all fit together? That's what our Heavenly Father has done. And look around. This is what he's doing right here. We're all different. And we all need each other, don't we? Paul is saying, uh, you know, we need the left foot and the right foot, we need the hand. These all do different things, and we all need it. And as a side note, if you hurt your pinky toe, what happens to the entire body? Oh, your whole body hurts. You can't even move. So when one, uh, one, body, uh, one member of our body hurts, we all hurt. When one member of our body, uh, uh, the Lord blesses them mightily, we're all blessed. But isn't it fascinating how the Lord builds his church? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Praise the Lord. We are grafted into the body of Christ. We are citizens with other believers. We are of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom he also build it together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Fitly framed together. We are a church fitly framed together. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like unto a man which built on a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock, that chief cornerstone. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation built in a house upon the earth, against which the stream did ve beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. If we don't build ourselves on the chief cornerstone, we're going to fall apart. As a church, we need to stay with the chief cornerstone. We need to stay with the word of God. We are built upon the word of God, and then God adds to the members who he wants. Unfortunately, not everyone chooses the chief cornerstone. 1 Corinthians 3, 3, 9 says, For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth there, thereon, thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation out there. The world is telling you all kinds of different things that you need to be set on this, you need to be set on that. No, that will all wash away. That will all wash away. And I know those who've been around for quite some time have seen fads come and go, seen standards come and go. But the one that's still there is still God's word. Still God's word. And you know it. 
Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, and he himself shall be, say, yet so as by fire. What have you built upon? How are you building? What is your work based off of? Is your work based off of the standard? Or is it off of what the Wall Street says or what the government says? What, what is your standard? Where are you building yourself off of? You may see some riches in something, but it's going to go away. You want something that's going to last. <clears throat> and again, the stones are all different and all arranged by the Lord himself. For those who have chosen to be a part of it, he's going to fit you perfectly in place. Romans chapter 12, verse 5 says, So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the propitiation of faith, or ministry, let us all wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. The Lord has put together all sorts of different talents. Remember, we looked at each other and said, we're all different. Not only are we all different, we're all different talents. And we need all those talents. We need every single one of those talents. We need somebody, we need our teachers. Let me, uh, Brother Jack is going to be teaching on Saturday. The brother Patriots can be teaching on Friday. Chris is going to be teaching in a few moments. <laughs> we have wonderful teachers. We have wonderful people who exhort each other, encourage each other. You know, I miss Debbie. Um, Debbie is a writer. She writes you letters, and, and they always come at the right time, and the Lord makes that happen. When you need that encouragement, somehow a letter from Debbie shows up. <laughs> she doesn't know why she wrote it, uh, but it's perfect for that moment. Uh, write Debbie a letter. She's taking care of Steve. Um, so write her a letter. She'll be encouraged. Let her know that uh, she is missed and she's loved, and that she's doing the Lord's work there with Brother Steve. We have those who come alongside, those who can comfort, put their arm around and sit there and listen and, and comfort when those needed. Then we have others who crack the whip. And those two don't go together, do they? <laughs> and sometimes whip cracking has to lay off for comforting to take place, and sometimes comforting has to move back so that things can move forward. But we all need each other, all those different pieces fitting together. We all need you. He builds the church. The church is an unbelievable, amazing thing, isn't it? And the Lord has created it. Who would think you'd put all of us together? If I had to choose who to be my church, you may not have been part of it. <laughs> no, I love, I love our church. We have an amazing church. We have an amazing church family. And I've had uh, visitors come, and, come in and, uh, and tell me, but, you know, when I go to another church, uh, a larger church, I'm just a number. Nobody knows I'm there. But when I come to church, your church, I get hugged like I'm part of the family. We want that. We're a family. We're a church working together, striving for the Lord's will, loving each other, and loving all those who want to be a part of us. And so praise the Lord for that. <clears throat> So as the Lord builds our church, he will add new people who are come to be perfectly fit into his local church. And sometimes you may wonder, I don't know how this guy's going to work in this. <laughs> but he's going to perfectly fit people into Temple Heights Baptist Church. They will be different. Maybe a little odd. Maybe a little scarred. But they fit perfectly. The house I grew up in had a stone fireplace, a facade stone fireplace, and uh, 
the outward was some stonework and always looked at it. They're all different pieces, like we mentioned, and yet they're made for a beautiful fireplace. The stonemaker picked those stones to fit him in. And praise the Lord, he has chosen you to be a part of us. New members that will be coming to our church will feel like they've always been here. You'll feel like I've never known you not to be here. That you've always known them. That you cannot remember a time without them. Isn't that what family's about? You have a new baby born into your household. You don't remember the time when they weren't there before. But they've always been. So God has put us all together with different skills. All of them are needed. And we want to use all your skills. God has put you here for a reason. Let's magnify the Lord with the skills that God has given you. Some have the ability to understand languages. <coughs> I don't. <laughs> Anna and others do, and praise the Lord for that. Others have the ability for administration. <coughs> others have the ability to comfort and encourage, to teach, to cook, to decorate. Others sing and play instruments. Praise the Lord for each of you and how the Lord is using you. May you allow the Lord to use you in mighty ways here at Temple Heights. Verse 8 of 2 Peter chapter 2 says, And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they are appointed. Stones are also stumbling stones. Stumbling stones. And again, Peter quotes Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13. I sanctify the Lord of hosts of himself and let him go, be, let him be your fear and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the house of Israel for a gin and a, a snare and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken, be snared and be taken. Paul also quotes Isaiah and Romans. Again, another quote that's being used throughout Scripture. You are also fitly put into the church. You are built on the standard of the cornerstone, but yet you're also a stumbling stone. How many of you like to be a rock of offense? And Jesus, are, Jesus is the first rock of offense, but since we are a part of his body, we are also a part of that. How many of you like to be an offense? What's an offense? Well, we have talked about here a stumbling stone. You, you know, I, Legos are on the floor, and I hit those Legos, and it causes me to be in pain, causes me to do something, causes me to jump right. Maybe you are walking along a path, and you stumble over a stone, or you're walking through, or you're taking a hike, and you're trying to be very careful on what your feet are hitting, because, you know, for some of us, as soon as we hit something, we go down, and that's not good. <laughs> that could be six months of uh, hospital visits. Um, but then there are also stones that are walls. And when you're driving along the interstate and there's the barrier wall there, what happens when you go into the barrier wall? When you've got an accident, you're, you've caused a crash, right? And so that barrier wall keeps you in line and protects you from others, right? The barrier wall protects you from other cars coming at you and keeps you going where you need to be going. But if you choose not to stay in the lane that that wall is telling you to stay in, that can cause problem. That can cause you to stumble. That can cause you to crash. That will cause you great harm. So these walls and barriers direct us. It's a rock of offense, a stumbling wall. Isaiah 1, says, For the Jew require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus causes a reaction to everyone. You say Jesus will have a reaction, and you're going to have a positive reaction, have a negative reaction. Either you're going to go to him and accept him and believe on him, or you're going to reject him, run away from him. And don't want to have anything to do with them. But it doesn't matter. He is the chief cornerstone. He's going to cause a reaction. One reaction brings you to protection of his loving care. The other ultimately results in the eternal separation from him, which is eternity in hell. And nobody wants that, and neither does God want that. So here we have Jesus causing a rock of offense, a stumbling block, to cause you to make a decision. And guess what? As Christians, we are used as those stumbling blocks. 
do you point to others about Jesus? Do you point to, G- to people to Jesus? Do people see you and think you have something different that I need? Do you have something I want? Do they react to you what, when you talked about Jesus? We are a stumbling block. And then Peter goes on to talk about there in verse 9, a description of the lively stones, verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were a people, but but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Again, Peter specifically writing to Jewish believers. And we can see some of that written here in the terms that he's using and comforting them by. Your chosen generation, royal priesthood. He has chosen the Levites to be priests. He has chosen uh, the church is not a nation, a holy nation. He has chosen Israel as his chosen people, as his nation. And there they're pointing to Christ, right? A peculiar people. Today we uh, look at that word peculiar thinking, well, they're odd. Right? Well, that's not what this word means back in King James Version. It, it just means that it, t- it refers to an ownership. These people are owned by God. An ownership. A special people, especially called out people. That you should show forth praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But us as Gentiles, God has also chosen us to be adopted to his family. As priests, we have direct access to the throne of God. We don't go through anybody else. We can go directly to God. Don't come to me. Go directly to God. (laughs) He has what you need. We can talk to him directly. We can have a relationship with him. He wants a relationship with you. And we're also purchased by his blood, aren't we? We are owned by him. For what purpose? To praise the Lord. To praise the Lord. To show forth of him uh, who hath called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. We, can, we need to be praising the Lord for all he has done. He has called us out of darkness of sin to his marvelous night. He has been, we have been called because of his mercy. He has been merciful to us. Psalms 57.9 I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God. Brother Ed picked the right hymn today, didn't he? Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Jesus is our chief cornerstone. He was laid and set and planned. And this is the day the Lord hath made. He had died for us on that day, and everything is set from that for- place forward. He has set all of us neatly and fitly into the church to serve him with all of our different talents and all of our different quirks, he has fitly put us together so that we can be a stumbling block to the world and say, praise the Lord for what he has done for us. He has called us unto his marvelous light. He has also called you. Will you accept him today? Will you accept him today? Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you that you are a sure foundation. Lord, what I preach today doesn't change tomorrow. Lord, we praise you that you are not, never changing. And Lord, you are set in place. Lord, we thank you that you have joined us together with you, Lord, and to each other, Lord, in this local body, this local church, Lord. Lord, we praise you for what you've done. We praise you for what you're going to do. Lord, we look forward to how you grow your local body here at Temple Heights. And Lord, we give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. With well, their heads bowed and eyes closed. God is building his church and wants you to be a part of it. I wonder if there's anybody here today who would like to be a member of our local fellowship, Temple Heights Baptist Church. If you'd like to, we'd love to have you. Is God fitting you in here? Are you that stone that God has perfectly fit amongst other oddly shaped stones that don't seem to fit together, but that God has brought together for his wonderful purpose? I invite you to come talk to me about membership. Members, Christians, are you stumbling stone that bring people to Christ? Does your life cause a reaction to see that you are different? That you live by a different set of standards than the rest of the world? That your standard is built on the chief cornerstone? 
Maybe you swayed away from the chief cornerstone and maybe you need to come back to it. Maybe you're not even a part of the Lord's family. You see there in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, it says, To him coming, he's inviting you to become a part of his family, to be part of his living stone, to be set perfectly in place by him. Maybe you're currently not a believer, and at this point, you've rejected him. You've turned away from him. It's not too late to turn to him. It's not too late. He's inviting you to accept him. Start off the new year with Christ. You can do that today. All you have to do is call upon him. He's done everything else. Call upon him. You can say a prayer something like this. Dear Father, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to go to hell. Today I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Today I want to accept your free gift of eternal life. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for allowing me to go to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anybody here who would like to be a member, be baptized, uh, accept Christ as your Savior, have any questions, please, I'd love to talk to you. I would love to talk to you. We are a wonderful church that God has put together, that God is growing, that God is using, and we praise the Lord for each and every one of you. All right, we have announcements? Tonight after our evening service, we'll be having a leadership meeting to schedule the calendar. <clears throat> and then on Wednesday, we have our normal evening service with Spanish-English Bible studies with Awana going at the same time at 6.30 p.m. And then this Friday from 7 to 9 p.m., we have our Friday night youth outreach. And then that next day, that Saturday morning, we have the Ben's breakfast at 8 o'clock. And then 6.30 p.m. is the Bible study with Jackie White. And as always, read your bulletin. All right, you caught all that? <laughs> you can pick up a bulletin, <laughs> and then you can digest it. But, yeah, we have a lot going on. This weekend has a lot happening. So uh, make yourself avail, avail yourself of all that's going on. Uh, would you believe there's no birthdays this week? We need some new members with birthdays this week. <laughs> we like to say happy birthday, right? <laughs> all right, so we have some men to collect our offering. Wait, will you come up and uh, pray for our offering? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray you just be with us, God. I pray you just bless this gift, bless the people that are giving it, God. I pray you just uh, be with this church, help us to grow, help us to put you first and center in everything, God. Help us to give you all your glory, God, and help us to um, live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If anyone would like to have a prayer calendar, we got the Voice of the Martyrs prayer calendar, so come up here and collect some. Uh, if you have, know somebody who would like to have some, take as many as you'd like. All right. Let's all stand up together and sing, Blessed be the tithe that binds. Blessed be the tithe that binds. Stay for Sunday school, stay for the Spanish worship service. Thank you.